Hello everybody and welcome to the Blue Bottle Games dev stream. Hello, we are so punctual today. We started exactly on time. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, look at this new kind of purpley screen here. Yeah, That's so new. I took one of the like Twitter graphics I made uh, the other week and then I was like, okay, I'm going to put this one as the background because it's new and it's different and it has like the rate my build thing under it and I was like, that's like perfect location. Um, and it looks just like the Sega Genesis box art from the 90s. Oh, it does look like it's answer. cutting off. It does look like it's cutting off some uh, text because I was meaning, meaning to say, watch out Badger's Orifice. But uh -huh, wait, let Badger's me... Orifice. Yeah, yeah. Let me just make sure that the... The ordering of the chat box is above the game capture. There we go. It should hey. now be rendering above when I press this button. There we go. Thank you for pointing that out, Cory. That's a good find. So, yes, hello to... new chatters. We got Shuro. We got Paizo Kirk. Yes. Do we have anyone in hashtag stream chat? Can people chat in stream chat? I'm pretty sure I opened it. Uh... Um... Can we get a test from Boom Lover or, or Sakata? It's like dev scan. Let me make sure the perms are set up correctly. Everyone okay. can send Boom Lover, here. there we go. Hey, <laughs> excellent. Okay. Making sure that you guys can chat. It's good. Excellent. Good, 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 good. Chat permissions enabled. Going into general and saying stream is started. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, everybody. Whilst Corey is, is testing that. Hello, thank you, Dad. Tries to test test in Twitch. We are the Blue Bottle Games dev team. Uh, we've been working away on Astronauts. And uh, the 0.12 update has just gone out in roughly the last week. And so what we thought we would do in the stream is we would come on and we'd start a character. And we would basically sort of go through, show you some of the new features. You know, maybe get a ship flip going. Uh, so that's sort of the plan for the stream in general. And now I'll let people introduce themselves in the order they appear at the bottom left of the screen. Let's go. On Twitch, you're saying, right? Yes, Twitch. So that means I have to go first. Hi, I'm Dan Fedor. I uh, founded Blue Bottle Games, uh, developed Neo Scavenger, and I'm working now with the team on Astronauts. Hello, my name is Corey. Uh, I am a writer and designer on Astronauts. Awesome. Hello, I am Joshu, and I am a community manager and programmer working on Astronauts. I am Neighbor. I do a lot of the ship designs and station layouts. Um, hello, and I'm Michael. I'm also one of the programmers uh, on the game. And, and we also have our Crusoe, honor. who's not with us today. He's on vacation, but uh, you'll have seen probably a lot of his uh, items and uh, designs in the latest build as well. Yep. Right, so we've landed in the character generation. Chats, now is the time to get creative with your names. So you guys think of some names whilst we sort of jumble about with the character. Guys, what should we do with this character? Um, I've got any feelings. Should I just hit randomize a couple of times first and we'll see? See what we're feeling? Yeah. Do we always do he, him? Or do have we? I can't really remember. I don't know if we ever choose, do we? We just, whatever it starts oh, we with, just is hit what randomized. we get. Okay. I was too slow to say stop on the second one, though. Nah. The guy with the soul patch and the black hair. <laughs> This guy's got the soul, soul patch. patches rolling today, though. Everybody's everybody's got soul patches. Excellent. Any any names in the chat? We need some good name haven't, suggestions. Haven't seen any yet. Roll a d hundred. <laughs> Roll a d hundred for what first name, last name, and randomize that many times. Babbage von Scroopworks. Let's go. That, that works. sounds like an excellent start. Scroop works. Uh, oh, yeah. Two O's, one P. Scroop works. There we go. This is Babbage von Scroop works. They are our character for today's stream. Thank you very much for that name. A wild editor appears. Right. So hopefully you guys are pretty familiar with this character generation stuff. So I'm not going to go 
through it too slowly. We're just going to sort of rush through. You're starting out. You're very ill because you've lived all in space all of your life. It's the general gist of the first bit. Let's go. Uh, I think we're going to seek adventure. Always got to seek adventure. Are we going for like a skill build? Like a, a I think we want to make someone who's pretty, pretty like robust this stream because we really just want to show the new stuff as much as possible. So you either want to troubleshoot or jerry rig from here to get uh, high installation from one of these two. I can't remember now. Jury rig's a good bet, especially if you uh, are early in your career. There you go. There Mechanical you go. engineering, brave, coordinated. Yes, excellent. Uh, we'll do another seek adventure. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Seek adventure is OP, says Twitch. It's, sh I mean, it's, it's kind of meant to be the one place you... You're kind of meant to seek adventure over and over again, and then use the other ones as kind of like stop stop gaps, kind of. Um, I yeah, don't know, are you, seek I... adventure is like your meat and potatoes, and then traits, skills, and saving money is more like filling in gaps that were left behind. We tried to make them somewhat internally balanced. I mean, that was my job for a long time at one point, but you never know. This game sort of got a lot of got a lot of levers in it. Make the button bigger. Up that was the 19. Was, this is too honestly good that was our plan. We were like, just make it big. <laughs> anyway, so if we grab this, we would have zero dollars. Yeah, I am thinking we need money. Um, so I guess so we're a we responsible person, is what you're saying. We could cheat our way in. I mean, we could grab it and then just cheat our way up into some money. It just depends on what we're trying to do on stream here. You we know, we could we could. Um, hmm. what do we think, chat? Or you could. You could go no thanks fold and be an excellent gambler for the next time this comes up. Yes. If it comes up. And then we oh, might be able to gamble idea. it correctly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a good idea. And we get nine hundred dollars out of it, baby. Awesome. I know where I'm gonna spend my nine hundred dollars. The poker so, table. Lesson <laughs> legal method for making cash on the side. Do we want to gather intel for cops, backstab them, report to Ayotimua, or instigate violence? I think instigate violence makes you stronger. Yeah. Better at fighting. Backstab them makes you sort of like ruthless in some degree. Um, I can't remember what report to Io does. Does that give you? It wouldn't hurt to be good in a fight, right? Yeah. Why not? It's Maybe instigate violence. Fight. Yeah. And I you show them who the weakling is. Hell yeah. Strained back, but we're good with weapons or empty-handed. And we have a new enemy to potentially chase us around. Right. Should we do one more seek adventure and then maybe specify some stuff? Ooh. Sure. These are all pretty good. Mm. Probably get a second job as an electrician here. This one's kind of the OP one, yeah, I think. If you're going to be running all that wire. Yes. Right, so let's review our resume so far. We are quite <laughs> so feeble. That said, he shall remember the Von Scoop Works name. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of engineering stuff, though, so that's pretty good. Armed melee, unarmed melee, zero G ops. Um, You're a two dimensional character. You can throw a punch and you can fix things. If we really want to throw the punch, we could spend three years getting rid of feeble or whatever. Yeah, I think I might be just. Oh, it's two years. Okay. Um, might be good just to undo feeble at least. Um, can we save a bit more money? Is that going to give us. Nah, we're masters on this stream, dude. Uh, you know, true. we know true. exactly what to do with two thousand dollars. We're not gonna flip a ship with money we get out of character creation. So, That's right? True. Should we let's let's seek a ship then? Should we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh, this is <laughs> <laughs> the worst oh. one. The absolute worst one. Let's let's. I mean, it's also one of the cheapest, right? <laughs> well, for, you... well, while we're here, the we did. There are new starting ships with this patch, right? Like That's before true. we before we had just three, and there was like basically a kind of like safe, mid range, and dangerous. Those were the three. And the stolen hot rod makes four. Right um, now, there's I don't know, sort of like probably like I six say it's seven. eight or nine. Oh, really? Total? Yeah. And there, a lot of them are sort of like variations on that mid range ship. Like here's hey. one right here. This is um oh, nice. Estudo Dream, which is a uh, passenger ship for local space. It's got four jump seats on it that people usually take out immediately to like turn that into a storage bay. Honestly, I, I think, think this, this might be the best. Out. This is kind of like the best yeah. new ship, right, Naiba? Oh yeah, without a doubt. 
I think it's a fan favorite too. You've had Action Man 3K times. says the uh, the coffin would have been a good one to fix up and sell for a profit, which is true. That is um, true. The uh, and embrace the EVA suit life, which we can't afford. <laughs> um, based on my experience of that hot rod, it falls into very dangerous for different reasons than the coffin. <laughs> That's true. It like it's like a little, it's like a little gnat or like a little like like mosquito the way it flies. Yeah, you can really slam into stuff. All right, so we are the proud owner of a dream, metaphorically and literally. Uh, can you guys hear music? I don't know if I can. I I cannot. Oh, oh I, I can, can barely I can. hear it. Yeah, I turned it up. Can you guys on the, the Twitch stream just give us uh, some notes on sound if you hear them? Someone said no. Oh, no actually. music. But can you hear I, the game at all? Music, I, I think we're going to want it to be fairly low anyway. So yeah. I think it just might be a levels thing. I think it's just like pretty low. I think there is the music is there for me. It's just really low. I mean, like I can okay. turn it up. I'm okay with no music. They say okay. How dare you? But okay, and gentle music. I think gentle. One gentle of these music days. Is better. We need to change it so that when the music is at zero volume, it doesn't trigger the music player at all, because that will occasionally make the jukebox go silent in the game. Oh, yeah. uh, let's see, is there anything else good? Boom Lover is asking, are you guys showing just the basics or the new stuff? Um, the idea today is to try and focus more on the new stuff, and probably we'll we'll generally be aiming to find a derelict fix it up buy it fix it up and sell it and in the process hopefully see some of the new shipbroker stuff the new items um transponders ferries that kind of stuff uh, uh yeah so are we gonna start maybe we should start by at least browsing the ship the ship flipper and just kind of see what's out there maybe and then maybe we'll find them while we're out there. Does that make sense? We could take a look. Um, we would get a, a small preview of a few derelicts out there and see if one appeals to us. Wait, show the food cart. What are you doing? There's hot dogs. Oh, well, that's Not right. Dogs, There's but... new stuff. We've gotten so used to the food carts. We just walk right by them. In so now that street there's new there. food in the game that um, actually gives you pretty significant emotional uh boosts and it's expensive but this is you might recognize from the pros the Szechuan beef with pink pe peppercorn um man I, I'm, I'm getting hungry now i didn't eat enough <laughs> <laughs> don't eat immediately because i think you you start pretty full so you kind of get unless we fix that but and there's pause, another uh, josh there's a helmet on the ground there so you can yoink sure 2005 pointed it out and twitch and then there's another food cart up above that has the kind of Nigerian food that's also mentioned in that intro, which is cool. An art buy off. Um, shoot, I'm blanking on the name. Who's our artist oh, on this? Not the artist for the um, these vendor carts um, are done by Jerome Brenda. That's right. Jerome. Um, Crusoe actually did a couple of the food items, but, uh, Jerome did most of that stuff. And, uh, another thing, avoid the fish balls, uh, looking at Twitch comments here. Um, a wild editor appears, asks, quick question, is that our space on the station or do we rent hot bunk it? Like, can we legally strip that area down? It technically belongs to Kaleg, uh, or Ayotimawa. Um, so it's not yours to take apart. And in fact, anything you try and take apart on the station, you'll get tagged for um, basically sabotage or what's the word I'm looking for? Vandalism. Vandalism. Um, if people see you do it. So you could probably close the door and do it. The NPCs don't go in there, so you'd be safe if you did that, but uh, it wasn't the intention. Um, we, we don't really say this anywhere in the story, but I guess the way I think about that room is just like and overnight room you can rent and anybody can rent and you're like you happen to have rented it that night 
the night before you go off on your ship and yeah. like right right when you leave somebody else is probably it's like an airbnb or whatever canonically it's it's like the the place that day laborers crash in the middle mm -hmm. of the night but anybody could use it yeah i um, guess it would make more sense if there was like a bunch of bunks in there but for tutorial reasons we couldn't, couldn't really do that yeah we wanted to start small um so another a wild editor appears comment i know it's not necessary but i'd love to have curmudgeonly food cart vendors that we can interact with makes me think of the noodles man from blade runner <laughs> oh we've <laughs> talked you're... about the noodles man from blade runner a lot <laughs> literally we were like... going to the to the soup guy in uh in seinfeld which would that would be, be kind of funny to have to have like one food cart that gets you like really really big stat boosts but you have to do like a steaks conversation and it can be a <laughs> in order to get it, it can be like a Anything soup cart <laughs> that would be so awesome uh speaking of food somebody says uh sudanese sin i can't see the rest sorry says any plans to add cooking would be cool to be able to hire a crew chef so yes we actually have crusoe has actually been building a pretty advanced system for cooking um because just having a galley in general was a big um sort of uh design point for us um because dan has like been really fascinated with scenes from sci-fi everybody sits down and has a meal it seems to be a staple of the genre um so yeah there's a there's some items in development that you can kind of take raw ingredients and add water to them and and other things and kind of create your own little meals that are sort of like bespoke um, and, and raise your stats in certain ways. So there is cooking on the way. We're all very excited about it. Um, and it's a multi-part, like you have like five or six, not five or six, but three, two or three different items, kind of like the medical system now to be able to like do it all. I'm just gonna do a quick Are you doing job. a gig? Yeah, I'm doing a gig. I'm gonna make some money. So something we've done with the gigs actually is now there's always gonna be at least one courier job, which will be like a small, a small sort of short range job you can do on the station so if you're really out of money um that's a way to do it i think i've gone to the wrong and place actually they also won't include the thirty thousand dollar ai transport mission or the three hundred thousand dollar cursed purple jumpsuit transport mission <laughs> so, i didn't are... even know i didn't even know all this you learn something new every day on these streams that just happened this like this week i think a couple days ago we put that patch out um, That's smart. But we wanted to make sure that if you were trapped here and didn't have money to undock, at least one option would always get you like a couple hundred dollars or maybe a, a couple thousand if you're lucky. Someone remembers label 99. Let's go. Yep. Oh, that's Cyrus. Cyrus Sorry. actually did uh, a lot of the art for those old logos, including the, the label 99 rice wine. Shuro says it would be nice to have cravings for food. Like you can't just eat one food over and over again. Currently, I just eat any food I find on there. Like, so that would be interesting, like developing preferences. Interestingly, okay. I think the AI will. Um, like there are different stat benefits and drawbacks to different foods right now, namely the difference between trenchers and like cooked food from a vendor. Um, so there's an effect based on what you eat. And then the way the AI makes decisions in the game is based on how they remember those effects. So if they had a particularly good experience eating vendor food, they might prefer to eat vendor food in the future, although they can't nice. actually go to the vendor and buy it right now. So that's how you, you get leave it on the floor for them. <laughs> that's how you get infected by the bourgeois virus. Develop Very a taste for, develop the taste for four hundred dollar food. Oh, are you gonna buy a signal box for the ship, uh, Joshua? Oh, I might do actually. I was thinking I was going to get a poster just because they're kind of cool. Uh, but new, uh, anybody want to talk about the new Sundries card here and in, in uh, Crusoe's? I can stand? mention it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have a bunch of new items in the game, which are mostly for decorative purposes, like uh, wall posters, new patterns for floors, some furniture, um, and so we thought it made sense to kind of have these collected in a, their own kiosk. Like you wouldn't buy this at the scrap kiosk because that's that's mostly like raw material almost. Uh, mm -hmm. The licensed kiosk doesn't sell you anything. And the supply kiosk is more like a general store for like tools and, and field supplies. 
So this is kind of like if you went to the mall and you were at like one of those goth stores that sells like posters and um, in this case also has furniture and and sort of, I guess, a mixture of crate and barrel and hot topic <laughs> or something like yeah. that. So, the ultimate cons consumer experience in our yeah, future. The two both greatest ends of the stores. spectrum served here. That was the Tharsis Landing poster, another really sick piece of art all the posters are so sick and those are yeah the posters are a mixture of art from um so cyrus did some of the logos and we turned some of that into poster art there's a couple from actually one of the modern wolf artists who did travel posters for the pacific airlines space service um i think we have one or two others in there which um might be from the team or might not but uh but yeah, like we we basically had all of this great art just waiting to be used for things, and we thought, well, we're doing posters, let's do these. Cyrus is only now realizing it. Yeah, dude, there's post your posters are in the game, dog. Oh yeah, and uh, the programmable thing that we mentioned earlier, Josh is handling it in stream now. Um, we'll get a chance to play with that uh, pretty soon, but it's basically like the first step towards managing more complicated ship systems instead of having to go turn everything off manually like by walking up to it or like putting everything on a circuit and turning the entire circuit off this new device basically lets you wire individual items up to a box as many as you'd like and then have individual switches to turn them on and off remotely um, and on top of that you could connect one signal box to another signal box and then control the delay between turning the first one off and when it propagates to the second one, and then whether that delay is like logically AND or XOR, um, which is what we're hoping is kind of like the a baby step towards uh, redstone, like you find in Minecraft. Um, and maybe we'll be able to do some pretty cool stuff with that. Um, on, I was going to say the the only thing is it doesn't have sensors. I see Shuro 2005 say it would be great to have a person sensor, like enable lamps when you walk into a room. Yeah. Um, or like we've also talked about like when a, when an alarm signal happens, it should maybe turn something on and turn something off. That's like a, a layer on top of what we've built here. This Right now it's just turning things on and off. Um, the alarm signal would be, would be so clutch because... You know, you could invent like heat and fire sensors or something. If a room gets too hot, it kind of closes itself off in vents or mm. like um, you could save air by, you know, pumping stuff in and out based on where you're like what the Atmo is like yeah. the uh, O2 level. Yeah, I'd like for that stuff to happen and, and we could still theoretically add it later. It, it just isn't there yet. Um, Somebody asked for a use of the delay, and they said they're like not creative or smart enough to figure one out off the top of their head. To tell you the blinking, truth, blinking we, lights. <laughs> yeah, when we made this thing, everybody on the team was basically like, none of us are exactly smart enough to get to the to get to the, like the kind of peak potential of this tool, but we know somebody will. <laughs> so yeah. kind of the, the possibility on space guys. is pretty wide. Like, yeah, it's almost like you have to play with it a bit and then start to see how you could use it. Um, like you could theoretically set it up so that when you open, um, or when you I'm trying to think if like opening a door would be possible with it, cause you could really only switch it on and off. Um, doors are the ones people think of, but doors open based on proximity. So doors actually aren't the greatest example. It would be like, um, well, lights are the simplest one or, uh, I don't know, Josh, you made it. <laughs> Um, there is a question in um, Discord. Are there? A, there are a lot of new objects you can install onto your ship. Will any of these be found on new ships or ships that are in development? Um, so right now, I think you're going to find there's at least one large ship out there which has quite a lot of the new uh, recreational items and like personal decor items on it. Um, there's a handful of new smaller ships, which I'm not sure how much of the new like 
decorative items they'll have on them. Um, two of the the derelicts or scavenger ships that are out there um, are both tug class ships, and they'll have towing braces frequently. Um, and I forget if Crusoe said some of the ships might even have auto vents on them, which is a new item that will... It's a vent that automatically closes when there's a pressure difference across it. Um, so it'll help you kind of avoid losing air. Um, so I think it's not like the, the market is flooded with these items in circulation. You'll have to probably buy a lot of them if you want more than a couple. Um, but you will find them occasionally out there. Um... Can you change the color of the lights on the bunk bed? Uh, not currently. Not unless you modded it anyway. Um, and... Oh, someone else that doesn't like the blue light. Is <laughs> it too famous, sterile? Famous pet peeve of Naiba is not liking blue light. I think I'm just going to quickly go to commercial and then we can show off that kiosk before we head out. Um, yes. Before our character heads out, we're not heading out as a stream. Yes, sorry, the, yes. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot to say here, but basically we've repriced, we have a kind of complete new economy based on um, the ability to buy and sell ships. I don't really know where to start with this, Dan. You want to? Well, it might be worth it starting with the three types of ships you'll see here, the used, derelict, and sell categories. Uh, so used are ships that are not visible right now, but they are parked somewhere on K-Leg. Um, and these are turnkey. They're ready to go. Um, there's probably a little bit of wear and tear on them, but you can basically buy them and be sure that you can fly it away immediately. They are all also owned by an old an old woman who just drove it to church and back every day. That's all <laughs> she did. This is a brand new beauty. Here's the true, sales pitch. True coat on them. Slaps the roof on this baby. <laughs> you could fit um, a whole lot of stolen mirrors in this bad boy. So these are going to be the most expensive, but also the most complete. Um, the next category over by derelicts. These you can actually go out and visit right now. And by default, this kiosk shows you like maybe six to 12 um, that are out there right now. The The information on them is spotty, as you can see here. There's bits of information on each, but it's not consistent. Um, and the prices are also somewhat uh, of a gamble. Um, you can see for each one what the estimated price range for that would be. And then you can see the price that they're asking for it. It may or may not be a good deal. And you're encouraged to go out there and check first. Um, Previously, going out there and checking would actually change these prices, but that doesn't happen in in um, in an upcoming build. So, um, and this this one actually rewards some game knowledge. Like if you've played the game long enough, you can kind of recognize some of the models just by their silhouette, um, and you know, kind of get an understanding of what these rooms mean. And like, there's some instant. Uh, Dan's been if you've played Neil Scavenger, been into like putting sort of institutional knowledge into his games for a long time where like you are just a better player of having interacted with the game for longer. So there's some of that in here. So these info gaps can kind of be filled in by you. Like I can recognize most of these models myself uh, right now. Yeah. And, and I think the, um, the expected approach here would be like, you're looking through this list either for a derelict out there that you've seen that you're pretty sure you want or maybe if this is your first time looking at this um, as we are right now, getting an idea for which ones you might want to go take a closer look at before you buy them. You could kind of just buy one blind too and just hope for the best. Um, and occasionally you'll get lucky that way, like especially if you find it's closer to the bottom of the range. Um, but the uh, the intended play is... Find the derelict you want, and if the price looks good for what you're getting, buy it, and then either turn it into your new ship or retrofit it and try and sell it back. And it'll show then, up. It'll show up on here once you get on it, right? Yeah. Anything you don't yeah. see here will will be added to this list. Um, and then if you own either uh, your current ship or one that you've bought through here, the last category, sell, will show you all of the ships that you have and you can sell them. What's that? 
the, the name pizza of the ship, time pizza time oh the pizza time yeah <laughs> um and just like all of the other kiosks there's a there's a markup for things you buy and a markdown for things you sell so you probably in the long run once especially today's we're going to probably do a patch later today um it won't be as easy to just buy and sell immediately and earn money it, you're probably going to lose money unless you put some work into it um, uh, what would you get back for selling that now, Joshu? Let's see. So if I sell this, I will get zero in payout because the mortgage is 800000 and the value that I'll get from the ship is roughly 300000 Um So it would be terrible for me to sell this right now. What a steal. <laughs> Wait, Actually, so that, one other... Go ahead. I was going to say, it may be worth looking at the reverse of this process on the buy used because... Derelicts you have to buy wholesale. There's there's no way to mortgage those. But on a buy used page, you can buy it with a minimum down payment of half the value of the ship. Um, and you can control that up to 100% if you wanted and just buy it wholesale as well. Um, so you don't have to pay the full sticker price of the ship up front. You can just put down 50% and then do mortgage payments to make up the rest. Um, and... Another new thing in this build is on the fund, uh, the funds UI, you can prepay your mortgage, um, which you couldn't do before. Uh, so, yeah, there's a new button at the bottom that says prepay mortgage. And uh, that way, if you wanted to basically pay off the rest of your mortgage because you had enough money, then you could finally do that instead of having to do it every week or every shift. It wouldn't be a blue bottle game if there wasn't a bit of prepaying mortgage, you know? Yeah, it was, I think it was Joshu that said the other day, it's like, we have escrow in the game, or maybe it was Naiba. Yeah, yeah it was Naiba. Naiba. Everybody loves it, escrow. Why not? The last thing to show would be this really sick feature where you can do a drone tour of a ship just to see if it's really what you want. Uh -huh. I, don't know if yes. you guys, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but it only works on the used lot because you couldn't visit those IRL, right? Because they're yeah. kind of off, off somewhere else, so... You can do While this tour. is loading, um, let's see. True 2005, nice idea. Sadly, the turbo pumps suck as low as normal pumps. It's more of a saw trap. I've already found a gym. You might consider having a logic component. We're back in the logic conversation here. Um, could you expand on how the OSFX pen works? Okay, maybe after this, Joshu, we could we could stop by the medical kiosk because there's a question or two there. Um, angled wall tiles. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Uh, we've tried this, and it the lighting system does not like angles or rounded edges. Um, so it's probably not going to happen. Uh, do we have insurance? No. <laughs> so, um, so the question mainly here was, how does the OSFX pen work? And it is, it is kind of like a way of postponing the effects of atrophy. Um, your bones are basically like growing weaker by the minute because you're in micro G. Um, and so the OSFX pen is kind of like an injection that recalcifies your bones, uh, to somewhat counteract that process. But, um, you're expected to, to do exercise periodically and use the OSFX pen periodically, um, in order to prevent atrophy from sinking in. Now, in practice, I think that's like weeks or even sometimes months into the game before atrophy catches up with you. So it's not a huge deal right now, but it is in there. Um, and then it looks like this is also uh, the place where you can buy the exercise equipment, which is new in this uh, build. Um, those are, A, like I said, a way to get rid of atrophy by, um, by physically strengthening your body. Um, but they are also an experimental feature we're adding in this build to get rid of negative traits. Um, so the feeble and the unfit traits are both um, removable by using this equipment enough, which again is going to take a long time. But um, we'll be kind of watching to see how the balance works on that. And if it works well enough, we might be able to add other ways to add and remove certain traits or even skills like through training. Um, so this is kind of like an attempt at seeing if that system could work. Uh, so if anybody has tried those and, and they have feedback, please put that in uh, in chat to let us know how that's been going. Um, 
And yeah, there's a couple other things here, which they've been here for a while, but if you haven't seen them, this is also a kiosk where you can deal with certain things like um, permanent, uh, permanent injuries that you've picked up during character creation. Um, and then just general like medical and um, pharmaceutical help. Uh, the toothbrush is known. I'm pretty sure yes. that name, yes. Yeah, that was another one that Crusoe added. So these are hygiene items, um, and they can only be used so often. But similar to the hygiene wipe, you can use them to improve your um, declining hygiene, which I think after a couple days catches up with you. And especially if you exercise and do those sorts of things. And it looks like that was actually a question over in Discord as well. Kelson was asking about the trait skill system. Can you exercise to improve your traits? So yeah, if we can make it work well with these two exercise equipment pieces, I think we'll expand it to other things. Um, so, uh, you're the, the rating system since we're oh. here. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry, completely forgot. And That's expanding. So. The old rating system. Actually, we didn't even put anything in the game to describe how these things are rated, did we? Yet. Or did you have a rollover tip somewhere, don't you? I'm pretty yeah, sure that's I'm... in once the text comes up. Uh... Yeah, just hovering over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is our rating system now. This was developed by... It was designed by all of us, but it was developed by Michael. And um, there's a room system here that grabs certain areas and designates them as certain rooms. Um, and if you look up there at the rating, there's these three numbers followed by a size, so or three values. The first thing is it's kind of like condition of all the parts from like a, a A to F scale, I believe. Um, the second number is how many specialized rooms it has. Um, and that can be double, so it could have like an engineering room and a uh, medical room or whatever, but it could also just have two engineering rooms. Um, and Michael can maybe talk more about how those are sort of determined. Um, the third one is its maneuverability based on its like thrust to weight ratio, basically. And that's another A through F scale, or A through E it looks like, sorry, in both cases. Uh, and then it's the size, uh, which is these cool cool names luna max series max type max yeah we kind of modeled the the size grades um in a similar way to you would see in uh shipping lanes um so like panamax is a specification for a cargo ship that is legal to pass through the panama canal and there's like suez max and there's you know all of the various canals around the world have different classifications that they'll allow um, so we have a similar range of those kind of referring to um, some of the major ports and what they will accommodate. Uh, like Luna was probably the first port off world. Uh, so Luna Max was kind of the original biggest ship and then Series Max and Titan Max were probably some later ports that started to accommodate larger vessels. And then after that, just like in the shipping world, they gave up on giving them names and they just say very large and ultra large, I think after that. So um, <laughs> They hired a new writer. Actually, that was during the writer's strike. Yeah. <laughs> on ship ship name creation. Chonk. Chonk, big <clears throat> chonk. Do you want to talk about the rooms anymore, Michael? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's um, so basically like you can uh, uh, specialize your ship with um, like making dedicated rooms that have, you know, like a themed in a way. Like, uh, for example, here we have the bridge, uh, which is basically just one room uh, and the airlock. And I'm not sure if the, did we add the information with hovering over it or no. So basically like right now you have to kind of, it's a bit mysterious and you have to figure it out yourself what makes a room, but uh, we definitely want to improve on this. Um, and the more rooms you have and the more, like the higher special, specialization they have, um, the higher value the ship has. And um, yeah, like for example, you can have your cargo room, you can have like a, like a, um, how do we call it engineering um yeah and this directly feeds in and how you can that's the, the resale value so you can if you want to flip some ships even focus on this and say okay this is a room like i want to like just prep up some rooms that are easiest for me so i can make the most in the least amount of time um yeah yeah if you think about the rooms like generally the value of a ship 
is all of the items that are on the ship, but if any of those items are inside a room, it's the value of those items are multiplied by a modifier because of that room type. So if this if this vessel had no rooms on it, like it was just open to space and it was a floor with a bunch of stuff on it, it would have a 1.0 multiplier on the value of all the items. But because some of these are enclosed in a bridge, they get a multiplier, I think I want to say it's like 1.2 or 1.4 for an open bridge. Uh, there's another one which is called a closed bridge, and it's a dedicated bridge that only has like a nav station and like a couple of things in it, um, but not things like batteries and pumps and stuff. Um, and so like the more specific the room, probably the higher the multiplier is going to get. Um, but it also means you can't just load up the room with, you know, a bunch of random things. Um, and related to that, uh, a wild editor appears, asks on, on Twitch, do the rooms have to have a door between them or can they be open hallway? And yes, they do have to have a door. Um, so the game is not smart enough to know that those two choke points between the, the starboard and port sort of areas on this ship are according to a human, a different room. Uh, it needs to actually encounter a door um, closing that gap to say, okay, this is officially a new room. Yeah, no open floor property brothers style concepts yeah. on your ships. Leave no. that leave that crap back in the two thousands where it belongs. Yeah. yeah. We and, want uh, tiny little park rooms. Be careful, this works like uh same as when selling a car. If you leave uh your wallet in the trunk, it's gone. You know, you don't get the money in it back. Yeah. So Can you buy uh, the ship back at least? <laughs> Uh, so I mean um, this this system is like derived like the prices are derived they're not like randomized or anything I don't know if people know that from playing the game but there is an entire value calculation system that Michael and Dan just described to create those numbers down to like the dollar um, so because it's system based you guys are going to figure out how to crack it I'm sure like somebody's going to build this crazy yeah, we had a, at least like a week or two of people gaming the system by like <clears throat> trying to remember what the I think they just go into a derelict and plop a few doors down and like immediately become millionaires. So just like build a ship that has like a hundred medical bays on it somehow because it has like <laughs> two sinks or something. Yeah. The, yeah I guess How the other thing it? worth saying is the rooms do have frequently a minimum or a maximum size that they're allowed to contain, which is the number of tiles uh, in the room surrounded by walls. Um, so there are some exceptions to like how many I don't know, seats you throw into a passenger area or something like that. Uh, two questions. Will there be in-game documentation on how rooms are defined and what should should not be in them? I'd like there to be. Um, some of you have no doubt seen the manual, the, the big red manual that is inside the game. And the intent is for eventually everything that you need to know, we would be able to look up in there at least. Um, but there are some things like we just showed in the, the rollover tooltip, um, like stuff we can hopefully just teach you through the UI directly so you don't have to wait and look it up in the manual. Um, but A, we don't want to do the manual before the thing is finished because then we'll have to do the manual again. <laughs> um, so some things are, are still missing from the manual. Um, and B, I think... There are probably some other features we may do because they're a little more mechanically interesting or important to the player than um, than the the sort of quality of life level of polish that we'll probably do more towards the end. But there are a few things that are exceptions. We may do those sooner if people really miss them. Uh, by the way, uh, since just uh, oh, uh, you closed it already. Like in the, the little uh, room previews here that you see, uh, you have these little icons that are also kind of showing you what kind of room you're seeing. Um, like, uh, I guess the, the circle is the bridge, I guess, yeah. This is oh yeah, pretty like good. a navigation wheel from a ship almost. Um, if you want yeah, to learn, I like. Go ahead. If you want to learn what goes into a room, actually like scanning this kiosk and seeing the pictures of the rooms can teach you a little bit about, like, okay, the airlock obviously just has the airlock and then another door. And then that, that sort of teaches you that, whereas the toilet room, oh, look, the toilet room's got a toilet sink. Uh, and then so, so by going through this and comparing them, you can sort of get a bit of a sense of, like, what a room requires. 
I love that it's basically like a Zillow would. ad for a ship. <laughs> yeah. We definitely need to tutorialize it, though, and I'll probably be writing a, a manual page for it soon enough, like uh, some type of OGZO's like, classification system for, for rooms, for in rooms and ratings. Yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I guess since you're here, um, Josh, you, the this kiosk has three panels, and this is the third one. You can go to those panels left and right the same way you go to the nav and docking screens left and right. Uh, there's bumper bumpers on the left and right side of the screen to navigate between them. Um, and this last panel is a way to buy a transponder for your ship if yours is damaged or lost, or if you bought a derelict that didn't have one in the first place. You have to officially own the ship. It's registered with Ojiza's registry in order to buy um, buy the transponder. Um, and then you can install it on your ship. And there's nothing saying you have to install it on your ship. Uh, you can install it on another ship too, which is sort of a, a way to uh, fly gray, gray market or gray legal area. Um, but you could be caught. And if you're caught, you could get in trouble having the wrong transponder. Um, and the, the transponders are scanned by the police um, for like salvage license and stuff like that. And as we get into like ship to ship combat and stuff, and we add more sensors and, and the like, like that stuff will be pretty important. Yeah. Once we get out there, I can I can maybe talk about transponders a bit more because it'll be relevant to like being detected and um, getting in trouble and that kind of thing when you're actually flying. Ooh, see if you um, can get an investigate death. That's a new. That's a new one. Uh -huh. we, have a, we have a new gig for investigating death. Smart Blackburn is seeking the service of a private investigator who can investigate the reported death of Harmony Curtis. The subject was involved in a price-fixing scheme for food and water imports stationwide. Locate Harmony Curtis's body on the flotilla. That's interesting. Inspect their body to verify cause of death and return that information. So there you go. If you wanted to, you could try taking the ferry there. Oh, this one's even closer. <laughs> That's on the port. dead body. There's a dead body on the port. What? Okay, we're taking unless this. they're unless they're alive. We're going you... full Miller mode right now. Okay, guys. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you know this person that you're going to check out? Idris Miller. Is that the name? Idris, Idris McGuire. McGuire. Check your socials. Check your socials. Right, wrong one. Let's go that. Let's go socials. No. No. Okay. It's just gonna be a dead man with a knife in his back on in the port <laughs> and your job is just gonna be like okay so there's a knife in his back i think he was stabbed <laughs> <laughs> right so we are looking for idris i see a pda on the floor that's usually a sign somebody was ganked can we see it? whose pda it is they are still on Port Port Azica Way, so they're around here somewhere. Wait. There they are. Yeah, they're uh, fine. They look fine to me. Examine their medical condition. I'm stabbed. You gotta go closer. You can't. You gotta get close to him. Oh man, I can't just like look at this guy from afar. <laughs> It could be like a weekend at Bernie's thing. You don't know if he's actually alive. Yeah, nanobots. All right, let's go. Babbage von Scroopworks doesn't have to get very close to recognize that Idris McGuire is remarkably robust for a supposed corpse. Well, this is awkward. Takes note of the apparent health of Idris McGuire. All's well that ends well, right? Let's hope the client isn't disappointed for this report. Wow. A real doctor. Gig's a gig. <laughs> a while, a while that it, Well, now I mean, you gotta murk him. A gig's a gig. <laughs> Just kill him. Be like, well, he's dead now. Is this like a Schrodinger's uh, autopsy? <laughs> hey, platinum yeah. tip payout. Let's go. Let's go. And nobody had to die. Perfect. All right, we should get off the station though. Also, there's like a bajillion questions in in chat here that we've not been so i did to. see one about the signal boxes earlier that i sort of i i read it only after i we'd left that section so i did just want to talk about this so someone asked about the difference between inputs and outputs and how this isn't very clear so what i want to say is everything you see in a signal box is its outputs 
This is what it's outputting to, it's not its inputs. If you want to connect things at, to its input, you have to connect them as the outputs of the other signal box you're using to connect to it, basically. Um, mm. So you, you would click the connect button of another signal box and then point to the signal box you want it to control. Yes. Okay. Um, and then this delay is specifically for the input to this signal box. So if it received the signal right now and the delay was 20 seconds, it would wait 20 seconds before handling that delay. Um, it's not a delay to where it sends signal. So if I turn this off, it automatically just turns that pump off right away. Um, mm. Yes. So Important just safety tip. Go back to that uh, for everybody. We want to talk about um, the gates, the or, and, nor, and. So if you have multiple signal boxes pointing into the signal box, you can use the, the or, and, nor, and sort of settings to tell it whether how it should listen to those different on signals from other boxes. Um, so what you can do with this is you can connect two boxes to it and then have the delay from one box be different to the delay from another box, and then that would sort of like, uh, you know, given you're using the right type of gate and the right input settings um basically you need to chain lots of boxes together to get more complicated things but um once you have a bunch that's of the them, basis of programming though yes yeah, <laughs> so, then you, you yeah, can do more interesting someone, it's a, only a matter of time until somebody turns a spaceship into a working computer with all this i sort of imagine someone will show up with a ship one day that just has like a ton of walls that are all next to each other and then there's just like 50 signal boxes and they'll be like yeah this 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 just calculates pi to like five decimal places or something i'll be like what oh and you <laughs> did you show the labeling oh yeah um, labeling is cool oh yeah it's a it's a subtle thing but it's i think it's important you can call these switches anything you want so if you forget what the switch attaches to um or if like one switch connects to a thing and then another switch connects to a circuit and you don't know what that circuit does anymore. At least you can write the, the label here to help you remember later. Or, you know, like every time you see a, a signal box, at least in America, you open up and there's always somebody who's like scrawled on there, like, never turn off. Or like, <laughs> never turn on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yes, one day someone will play Doom in Astronauts, and I am... It'll be Foon from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. 2005 was just asking that. Um, somebody, uh, Koror on Discord, was asking, any thought to increasing the diversity of modules components? Presently, things seem somewhat limited. Yeah, so I think what you're going to find in the game right now is one or in some cases, two examples of a given component. And if there's two, it's usually, here's the crappy version, or like the consumer model, and here's the pro grade version. Um, and I think what you're likely to see is, before we start adding more variability to something that already has like two, we'll probably fill out all the ones. And then if there's still time after that, we would start adding more diversity. Um, because I, I don't wanna just add a new part for the sake of adding a new part if it doesn't do something interesting or different like we wouldn't add another air pump that has exactly the same stats because why would you bother um so if we can think of a compelling reason to add a new version of something like you know the air pump and the turbo air pump are distinctly are distinctive enough that you might want one instead of the other um and i think my one of my dream variability things for the future is multiple nav stations and when you sit down at one it looks a little bit different like the the layout of the controls is a little bit different like getting into a different car um but that's that's kind of pie in the sky until we finish some of our more important pressing work we have product engineering skill so confirmed androids killer robots incoming <laughs> well truth is that next patch we're working on um or i guess we already started working on several things if you look at the roadmap and it includes um it's a lucky number 13 patch so it's where we're f starting to expand upon and add supernatural elements into the game as well as like microplots 
Um, and we've been kicking around various kinds of supernatural sci-fi tropes to add. Um, and one of them that keeps coming up is the possibility of how we think about nanobots in the universe here. Nanobots already exist in Neo Scavenger, but they would obviously be more advanced and different here. So um, one of the ideas we're more interested in does involve nanobots, although I won't spoil it or get into it yet. But killer things, absolutely. Killer robots, maybe. And I think for what it's worth, the robotic engineering skill does boost your your engine your sort of like work speed on anything that involves control systems so i think things like um the nav console will actually uninstall faster with that s set of skills too um but yeah like i i think we need to figure out in our next patch like what is the range of things you might encounter in the game from a sci-fi slash supernatural uh, perspective it's if you've played neo scavenger like the kind of strange and bizarre range of, of like the kinds of supernatural things you encounter is sort of what we're trying to replicate since we all love that game so it'll be it'll be odd it won't be super tropey um we're guessing weird weirdly it will be and it won't be because like in Neo Scavenger, the the weird stuff that exists is what people think exists. Right. It's like the the local legends and folklore. So in some ways, it's almost like what do people expect to find in space, going bump in the night, or what are their fears, their realistic fears of of encountering in space. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be. Well, there might be like. X Files like encounters, but I I would like it to be a little bit more. I'd like it to feel more like Aliens or like The Expanse or like Firefly in terms of tone, and less like Star Wars or um, that sort of thing. No Cantina. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I love my jazz. No, no, it's called Jizz cut, in uh, Star Wars. Cut through, cut through the wall yeah, is it, it is. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, Cut through the wall, you say? Yeah, you'll just find another door behind that door. Oh man, okay. We Listen the, to the ship designer. Got the ship designer himself on here, dude. While hacking this. Oh wait, I've, I've scrapped it. That is not actually how you dismantle it. Scrapping is the fastest way. Are we in here for speed or money? Money. Money. Uh, Skeleton Guardian asks, does hydroponic slash survival aspect enhance the game? Um, I'm trying to remember if the planters actually do produce oxygen. I want to say they probably do now after Crusoe has been through with them, but uh, he would be the one to ask there. He might have actually changed the, the planters so that they can consume CO2 and produce oxygen. Um, but there aren't any... Apart from that decorative item, there aren't really any hydroponic or um, sort of plant-based survival type things in the game. It's mentioned in the lore, like we, we in the in the world, we think there's a, or we've written in that there's a large grow op, an LKLG somewhere, hydroponic grow op for sprouts and stuff like that, which is where yeah. trenchers come from, and flotilla for that matter. They they both have. Uh, basically a, a cultivation wing or aspect to them. Gotta get food from somewhere. I remember there's no more Earth, so it's all happening out here. Does disabling the transponder wall on a derelict do anything? Um, yes. Thanks yeah, for reminding me. It does. Um, so the when the police are out and patrolling, they are looking for suspicious people. Um, and they will usually target whoever's closest. However, if if there is somebody close and then somebody slightly further away who is docked to a derelict, they'll prefer the person docked to the derelict. Um, and then on top of that, if they see somebody without a transponder, they're like super, you know, they're on that as a priority. However, 
the transponder is almost the only way they're going to see you in this really junk filled boneyard. And like after a certain distance, um, you could flip your transponder off and they won't even see you. Um, I don't want to spoil what that distance is, but basically the chances of them seeing you go down, um, if your transponder's off and you're further away. And so it is worthwhile if you are illegally salvaging a derelict to have your transponder off if you're far enough into the boneyard that you think you might not get seen because they'll just pass over you and look at some of the NPC ships that are flying around instead. Um, and then when you're done salvaging, you know, you undock, you can flip your transponder on and fly around and nobody's the wiser. Uh, so yes, there is a little bit of game mechanic wrapped into that transponder. Will disabling electrical equipment also help with detection? Like turn the transponder off, all heat sources, all electrical signals. So we do plan on amping up our sensor, long range sensor system once we work on ship to ship comms and uh, ship to ship combat, which ship to ship comms are in the next patch. So we know it's a trope that we really like from stuff to be like, okay, their heat signature's down. So, oh, it's going up. Are they going to turn on their torch? You know, that type of thing. Um, so we're kicking it around. Haven't yeah, exactly I think we weren't sure if we would be able to tackle the sensor aspects in the next update, which is 13, uh, which has ship to ship comms and it kind of makes sense there. Or if we save that for ship to ship combat, which I, I want to say it was 15 or was it 14? I don't remember. I forget which. I it's one or two updates after. 14 uh, is another one. port. 15 is fire in the hold. So and that was the combat one? Be combat, yeah. Okay. So, it, like, definitely, if we're going to do it at all, it has to be by the time we do ship to ship combat. Um, and so, probably sometime between update 13 and 15, there'll be some aspect of that. Um, but. A couple things that I think are hard and fast rules. Um, if you have a nuclear torch on your ship, you cannot hide. Um, you will be visible from across the solar system like a mini sun. If you do not have a nuclear fusion um, drive, you might be able to hide a little bit better, but it's still really hard to hide against the background radiation of space if you have any amount of radiation or heat on you at all. Um, Radiation meaning also like electromagnetic radiation. Uh, so, yeah, how much cloaking or hiding you can do is maybe up for debate. Um, but, uh, like, things like passive versus active sensors. So if you have passive sensors only, maybe you won't be noticed uh, unless you're much closer. But if you have your active sensors on, people can see you from much further away. That sort of thing. Um, maybe in, in the combat update. It's Jeevers asking, is there any idea on what ship to ship combat would look like? Um, honestly, it's all pretty early stages. Now we've kicked around a bunch of different things we like and care about, but it will depend a lot on what the game loop is when we reach that patch in terms of like what kind of experience we're trying to achieve in addition to what's already in there. But I can just say the kinds of discussions we've had have been like submarine fights in that like is a lot more maneuvering and negotiation than there is like yeah uh, sensors maneuvering posturing yeah and then when somebody pulls the trigger it may it's be just deal. down to countermeasures if you're lucky or you're just dead yeah um, so a lot of like a lot like that and maybe a little less actiony in terms of you're probably not going to be flying your ship and flipping around and you know it's not going to be TIE Fighter, X-Wing bullets. versus TIE Fighter or whatever. Yeah. Um, does a tow brace completely remove stress damage or is it a reduction? It is a complete uh, mitigation of damage. Um, and then if anybody has tried flying with another ship docked without a tow brace, uh, it is continuous damage to both ships and it will probably destroy critical components on one or both of them within... 10 seconds or maybe 20 seconds of maneuvering.
Uh, um, so in the future, you can just slap a ship onto your ship, and yet and it's un unlimited armor. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't go inside another ship because of the way we built the game. There's no, like, uh, the ships have to not overlap right now when they dock. Well, actually, that's not strictly true, but it's better if they don't. Um, we have poked around at the idea of allowing multiple ships to dock to the same vessel. Um, but there are a few things which make that tricky. Um, so both design and technical issues. So I'm not sure if we could ever promise that, but it's something we'd like for sure. Everybody wants a Space Hulk. Yep. Uh, Any plans to add asteroids so you have to maneuver around and more importantly hide behind? We haven't talked about that much and indeed we kind of talk a lot about how much dexterity we want this kind of game to even have. Um, we already have some obviously with flight and with docking. Um, but our player base is pretty RPG heavy and not exactly in it for dex games so... I don't know. We have talked about mining asteroids, though. We're into that yeah. idea. Like, flying around the Boneyard in many ways is probably similar to flying around an asteroid field. Uh, like, the, the difference between one derelict and the next can frequently be pretty tight, and getting between them can be hard. Um, so it's not, it's not impossible for us to replicate that, where instead of derelicts, they're rocks. Um, and I think we'd probably have to answer that question when we're out in some place that maybe has planetary w uh, rings or an asteroid belt. Um, but uh, yeah, like we've we've talked about like, wouldn't it be cool if you could you know, mine an asteroid for ore, um, or even park near an asteroid and like turn it into your base or something like that? It certainly would be awesome if we could do those things. And I think the game would technically support it if we if we wanted to, but. Um, basically every question like this comes down to is it on the roadmap if it's on the roadmap we're going to do it like if it's explicitly on the roadmap we said we would do it and we have to try and do it um, if it's not on the roadmap it's probably on our magic one million item list of things we want to do and if we have time to we'll add them but you know we won't promise those until the roadmap's done yeah, if you and all your friends buy astronauts when it comes out and we become multi-millionaires, <laughs> multi-million dollar studio, then we'll put whatever you want in the game. We'll put it's you just in the like game. It's like when you clap your hands, uh, Tinkerbell gets her wings. Well, when you slap that dollar bill down on the table, <laughs> this dev team gets their wings. <laughs> so we, I mean, we want, we love this game. We're, we're going to keep working on it. Just gotta, We've been doing work. it. I think this game's been in development for six or seven years, so it's not like this is a fly by night. We want to get out of it as soon as possible. We're definitely in it. Although we are trying to finish the roadmap approximately by the end of the year. So if anybody's wondering, like, what's what's the timeline look like? Um, you know, the things that the roadmap says should be in the game, we'd like to be in as close to the end of the year as possible. Knowing us, it'll probably run a little bit late, but um, we are trying to be better about getting things done sooner instead of endlessly working on them. So now and we do have a publisher we love and um, plans for follow ups to other games. So, you know. yeah, we also want to make other games, too. Yeah. I mean, now that we set a number, it will inevitably be like, you know, twice as long as that before the next check in. Uh, I think Modern Wolf, Modern Wolf would send Hitman to our house personally. They've been extremely accommodating, I'll say. Not to well, me, man. They beat, they beat me up. Oh, uh, well, somebody's got to take the foot. <laughs> no, they're great. They're wonderful. Uh, Real King Catlamar asks: Is is there any plans for standard chemical rockets such as Hydrolox or Ion? Um, I think that kind of falls under the same umbrella as the variable components that I mentioned earlier. Um, like we may end up adding them uh, after some more pressing, like basic needs are covered. Um, cause right now you have the RCS, which is enough to get you around local space. There will be a torch drive. There is one in the game, but it does very little right now. Um, which will be more for long range, but very fast travel. Um, and whether or not we want more sort of like 
thinly sliced differences between those. Um, obviously, it'd be great if we could, but you know, we'll probably uh, finish the roadmap stuff and things that were promised there before we start going back and sort of backfilling more options in. Okay. When do we get mining? Well, sorry, I guess we already answered that question. Not, not, not sure yet. Um, you, there is a mod out there. I think that Crusoe released. If you want to mine in the mod. Sorry, what are you saying, Naiba? Oh come! On. We need things, more things that explode. Uh, hydrogen, oxygen engines would be a good excuse for that. You know, for the uh, for the fire in the hold update. Well, one thing does already explode. I've, I, we've made a next thing that explodes. We just don't hear people do oh, it much. Yeah, but, no, no, well, no. you have to do some pretty like unintuitive things to get that to happen. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised no one has done it yet. Like, or well, like, I think I somebody know. has. One person yeah. has done it, and we're surprised. Yeah, I think I want to say they were they were pleased, shocked, but then pleased that it happened. I mean, it's cool when it happens. I, I still want to see canisters explode when they're overpressurized. Yeah. Uh, someone's asking, will you be able to use your torch drives as a weapon? And we have talked about that for sure. Um, Dan can probably elaborate on how the, the technology of the drive itself is essentially doing like little nuclear reactions behind your, sh not little at all, but like kind of like constantly yeah. exploding behind your ship. So it's insanely dangerous to the point where you could wipe out an entire like little system with it if you're if you torch up at the wrong time so yeah i think the um the rule of thumb for the torch drive when we get around to doing the torch drive is 5000 kilometers behind you um you have to be that far away before you're allowed to light up your torch drive because otherwise they will basically instantly shoot you um, because the radiation and energy coming out of the back of a torch drive is, is lethal for thousands of kilometers, uh, at least at the, at the scale that we're talking for like these ships to be able to accelerate at one to two G's and it's so many thousands of tons of mass that they're propelling. Um, so whether or not that can be useful as a weapon, I, I think it absolutely could be. And if, if I get my way, it will be, uh, what that looks like. I have no idea. Like, um, as you can see from the the nav screen, it's a little bit weird the way the orientation works because we're kind of like it. It looks like we're thrusting forward because we're a triangle, but like the game is top down. You're looking sort of through the roof of your ship to the floor, and I envision the the torch drive being on under the floor of your ship, pointing down, like away from your feet. Um, so you're actually kind of like scooting around side by side with these RCS thrusters and not really like you don't strictly need to turn your ship around to flip and burn with RCS because you have nozzles all over your ship. But when it comes to actually flying from Mars to Jupiter, you're going to have to probably flip and burn. And what that looks like in the nav screen, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to make it different somehow or maybe just assume when the torch drive is active, the triangle is the direction your ship is pointing and you do have to flip and burn. Um, those are some maybe tricky questions we have to answer. But yeah, the idea is if if any local authority kind of sees on their sensor that you're warming up a torch drive towards an actual, um, you know, uh, reaction, then some mag some mag activated uh, weapon that we haven't really talked about yet is just gonna just puncture it, you know, because it's yeah. just crazy crazy dangerous unless you you're licensed and then you have to call in and do checks with local authorities, you know, that type of thing. It's not just like anybody can punch up their drive at any time. Someone says we have um, hypo hypoxia. Yeah, you've got your helmet on there, Joshu. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the life-saving tip, chat. Our stream has hit is that right? Did we hit? Oh, okay, an hour and 15. I think. It looks like an hour and 15, yeah. I think so. 
Yeah, it's pretty I know good. you've touched on nano robots and robots, but what about a knife wielding Roomba the player can make <laughs> and or find? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be like a, an RPG battle you have to have. You come around the corner in a derelict and there's a Roomba at the other end with a tactical knife taped to the top of it. It's like our version of rats. <laughs> yeah. Just the very first thing you fight. Uh, are we going to try buying a sh go and buying a ship? Is that what's going on here? I think so. We might have to do a little bit of. Oh, that's not right. Um, oh, great question from Little War Arson. What are you guys most proud of in this update? Oh, such a sweet question. Huh. I don't know. I wonder if you asked each of us, we'd say something different because we each worked on kind yeah. of a different piece of it. Um, which is probably the the most accurate answer. Um. I think overall for me, like I, I like that the game now feels like it has a couple loops that you could play. Yeah. Um, whereas previously it was yank anything out of a derelict, you can sell it and then maybe move into one while you're at it. Now there's that, but there's also like that it's just as lucrative to maybe retrofit a ship bring it back up to working condition and sell it off. Um, and like the gigs are starting to come a little bit more mature and reliable. And it just, I, I think it feels like there's a little bit more personal expression and versatility in how you play the game. And that's definitely something I'm happy to see. You, Michael. Oh, like, you know, I'm too much of a coder. Like uh, for me, it was the, the ship rating screen since uh, there was like a lot of math involved and since this is all auto generated and like how it picks the systems and how it places itself so this was this was one of the few things that were like insanely difficult to figure out but then it suddenly just clicked and it worked and so far i didn't see any bug reports about it so you know <laughs> knocking on wood um yeah so this is one thing i really loved um, to do but also in general, the ship rating with the um, uh, this um, preview drone. Um, the drone, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, and like for the last couple of months, in the background, we were like building and improving sort of like um, async loading system. Like it's not a game mechanic, but it's something technically that how the game runs smoother in the background. And um, so we could use the system and improve it. And I hope we can like make a few. I don't want to spoil anything, but. Um, yeah, maybe this will be useful for for ship to ship combat as well. So it's nice to see that the stuff we build, or like for example, in the I think the ten milestone was it that took several months, and yeah. we built a lot of foundations there that is not really visible in the game, but now we can use, and this is like a really nice feeling if you know stuff just works. You know, it's really nice. Yeah, my, mine is similar to the. I think it's the ship rating system. I think it's like just sort of exciting and intuitive now that so that loop has always been the most sort of stable design loop we have the one that people enjoy the most time investing in and we always knew there was a, a future where people were just buying and shipping flips indefinitely or shipping flip flipping ships <laughs> indefinitely and making money that way and being able to balance out the economy and make up a rating system that is procedural and leads back to value and all that is the part I think is the coolest about this update, for sure. I know Josh's answer is going to be... But go ahead, buddy. Yeah, I think... Uh, it's probably, for me, it's the signal box, just because that's something I spent the most time on, and really, like, figuring that out. Um, and, like, it took it took me way longer than I estimated to, to sort of plug all these things together. Um, but I was pretty happy with what we got in the end. Uh, and I was like... I think I built a good enough foundation that when we want to come back to it, it should be really rather easy for me to add more functionality later. Now, what is going on in the game? I'm being very distracted by the fact that everyone is here. This um, is a criminal meeting. This is a meeting of criminal minds. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, so for me, I think it's definitely the, it's, it's a signal box. Just, and I had so much fun with that UI. Like, uh, It's quite a striking one. 
I was trying to, I was looking at how Dan had done the, the other UI, like the ship UI and stuff, and like trying to like crib notes from that to make it look like that. And then I was, I spent like a day like looking up different kinds of uh, like breaker boxes in real life. And I was looking at my own breaker box in my house. And then like, I got like a ton of ads on Amazon for like breaker boxes for like a month after that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we we learned go. which direction uh, light switches work in the UK. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to mention this as well. This was like a whole debate for like a couple of days, like which side is the on side. I even had to check here as well in Austria. <laughs> I will say with working on this game, one of the most interesting parts about it is that because it's so systems based, every time you build a new system, the other ones kind of get surfaced a little bit more and a little bit more. So it is this kind of accrual of gameplay that just sort of appears through the design process, if that makes sense. And so every time a new, we put in a new thing, like new loops open up and we're like, oh, uh, here's some new gameplay we intended, but is only finally arriving. Um, and a lot of that happened in this update, just as soon as we made you be able to buy and sell ships, because it's like, for a long time, it's like, why are you working on a ship to make it that much better, you know? And yeah. it's like, well, now you can sell it you know that's one of a few things we want you to be able to do with a ship but i think someone mentioned earlier like that uh just building up the room is not worth the, the time investment so like we are really glad to get feedback like this so you know play with the system and see how it feels and let us know what works and what doesn't work uh, so we're still you know happy to balance it out a little bit more um yeah yeah, and we're we're doing our best to stay on top of feedback. Uh, but as some of you probably saw, like we had a few streamers uh, show the game, Splattercat, Nookerium, uh, Dad tries to keeps a constant going stream. Um, so there was there was a pretty big influx of new players, and with it a lot of feedback and some bugs. Uh, so if we don't notice your feedback, um, we're not ignoring you. We're we're just human. <laughs> and barely keeping up in some cases. Um, so, yeah, it, it's okay to maybe ping us, um, or, I mean, pinging us would get annoying if everybody did it, but, you know, bring it up again if we don't see it the first time. Real King Cat says, what feature slash idea are you guys looking forward to adding the most? And I'll say, this thing we're working on right now is something I'm personally extremely excited about, which is without spoiling too much essentially adding micro plots into your game so that you get little kind of micro narratives um that are kind of procedurally generated as a writer i'm very interested in like story structures and how to like how to create like a more emergent storylines and stuff like that um and we've always from the beginning wanted to have these little micro plots like in firefly where it's like oh i have to get this delivered to there before this happens and oh no this other guy showed up so being able to replicate those procedurally based on people's behaviors within the game is something i'm super excited about because our dream is always for people to come onto forums and be like okay you wouldn't believe what just happened and they just have to tell you the story that just happened you know it already happens now, and you know people will be like, uh, usually it's ship stories. But anyway, we're trying to get some of that in the game, and I am very excited about that personally as a writer. Just real quick, Dan, do you remember what it? What is the stat for privacy again? Do you know what it's called technically? It should just be stat privacy. Be ah, stat stat privacy. privacy. I I I know what I've done. Right, I put DC stat privacy. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's just stat. Okay. Oh, cheating your way into their heart. I, uh, wow. I am abusing the game. Uh, you know, this, these things are doable in the game, very much so. Like, when someone is, has a lot of privacy concerns, you need to just leave them for a bit time being. Uh, however, because we're on the stream, I'm, like, I'm cheating my way through it. So, also, you might have... If you watch me with just what I did there, if you press F3, then you get this menu, and you can do some cheating. Uh, if you press help, you'll... Uh, You'll get See some, the commands you can use. Some yeah, insight the commands you can use. Anybody um, else have an answer for the feature you're most looking forward to? I I kind of want to say supernatural things just because like I love a game that's creepy, right? Like 
the the game right now is is chill. Is 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 dangerous because of environmental concerns, but like there's nothing there that's like spooks you. And I can't wait to like add something weird to to confuse the players, spook them a little bit. I think bit. especially like if you're out there away from people, away from stations, let's say, and you start to like feel the sense of dread or, or horror, like things are you're exposed out there and things can happen to you, but then there's like this this feeling of relief when you're back among people and you're safe again. Yeah. Um, if we can kind of play those two things off of each other, I'd be pretty happy. Um, Sakata on Discord says, on that note, could you either make a suggestions feedback thing like the bugs room, or is there something like GitHub issues tracking? Um, so on Discord, the suggestions channel is for like things that aren't in the game, but could be that that you would like to see and then there's the bugs channel for things that are in the game and aren't working correctly um we do peruse the steam forums which similarly have like a general uh and tech support uh sub forum and reddit also has uh it's not really divided up anyway just freely posting in there um so those are um Right, but they scroll off, hence the suggestion for the similarity to the bugs room. Ah, well, uh, right, I, I understand. Do the, you, what do you think of that, Josh? I think I think actually that does make a lot of sense, and I might I might make that change uh, at some point soon, because this is like a new feature to Discord, really, that I uh, haven't really used too much. It's, it's sort of coming in the last year or so. It's just like... The being forum thing? Forums, yeah, and like I Threads completely understand clear, why that works better for suggestions, and I think, I think that's, that is a good suggestion. So thank you for bringing that up to us. Um, and I, I will say generally that like we're we're pretty open to listening to suggestions, uh, as as the guys have said. Uh, but with the like increased influx at the moment from like the Splat Cat stream and the the patch and stuff, like we'll try to respond to everything that we can. Uh, we might miss some stuff. If we do, I promise you it's not personal. Uh, feel free to ask things again the next day if we don't get around to answering your your questions because we really do love chatting to. Uh, the fans and and making sure that like you know questions suggestions are are sort of listened to and uh, responded to where there's a response that's needed i mean you're apologizing but i'll be arrogant and say i would put our our rate of looking at feedback and incorporating it into the game against anybody's out there like we we do talk about most everything that comes comes through and take and have a pretty open testing process if you want to get involved and um it's true i'd want to now that we have an influx of players, there's only a few of us, but we do take feedback very seriously, and we think a game is only as as good as its you know player feedback. So yeah, keep, keep then, talking to us. It's a good game because we get feedback. Exactly, like, and, and that was true in Neos Scavenger, and it's still true in Astronauts. Like we know kind of what we want to build. Sometimes we hit the mark, but sometimes we don't, and then sometimes people play the game and reveal things we hadn't thought of or things we should emphasize more um so yeah anything anything we can learn from watching other people play uh usually makes the game a better thing so um and streams like anybody who wants to stream it uh let us know if you do because it's always it's always revealing to us to see how somebody else is playing the game because we sort of assume you're playing the game kind of like we do and then occasionally we'll watch somebody and we're like oh I never did that before and we should probably either patch that or support that or you know add a feature to to make that easier skeleton tongue says neo scavenger 2 on the same engine question mark neo know, scavenger 2 know. on the same engine so i think uh without actually having gone in there in a while um the next Neo Scavenger is going to be using the engine that the mobile game used because that is not Flash. That is using something called Hacks Flixel, which is built on Hacks, which is basically like a meta programming language that compiles into native apps. So I can write the code, think of it like Java basically, except in this case, I can write the code in a Java like language 
and then it compiles it into an exe for windows um i guess a bin for a mac and like basically machine specific versions of the game uh so that they run natively um so those those games will basically uh be running better than the flash version you see on steam um skeleton follows up with i talked about neo scavenger but in semi 3d like this game oh well will it be like this game's engine i don't think so honestly i haven't i haven't gone back to the old engine in such a long time it it may not work as well as i remember and a lot of the stuff in this engine is basically ripped out of neo scavenger and then brushed off and fixed up a bit like all of the the disease stuff and like radiation and stuff stuff those are all built in neo scavengers uh engine and then i copied the xml over from that and put it in json's here um and this so is, there's in, a lot... this is in unity but the the coding base is what you're talking about like not yeah like, like a lot of the same systems are basically in both games but um there's enough of a difference that you couldn't just copy paste directly without a little bit of work um i don't know though like i I like the hex map of Neo Scavenger. I like, uh, I actually think the Neo Scavenger inventory system is a little less breakable. Um, I don't know, I'd have to see. And the, for example, crafting kind of works. Like you can do more things in Neo Scavenger engine with crafting than you can here. But I, I actually think that's just because we haven't put as many recipes in here, or maybe just a dedicated UI to make those recipes obvious. That's a good question. I don't know. Um, but I I think that's at least a year off before we make that decision. Yeah, it's an odd game to make a sequel for. I mean, it's just like such a unique game in general. Um, and I would worry tampering pretty... with it too much would piss people off. Right, exactly. Because pe even like it's so odd in the, how it was built, people are kind of like just used to the oddnesses of it and be like, oh, it's not the same anymore. You know? Yeah. Um, are you interested? Uh, a wild editor appears. Asks, are you all in ever interested in supplemental community lore, like building out background lore or things like that? Um, I want to encourage people to generate whatever lore they want to share with the community. Um, as far as like, do we need help generating lore? Um, I would say like, if you are aware of local folklore or mythology or like creepy sounding um, locations in the world or like cryptids we we could probably benefit from knowing what those things are so that we can go research them and then when it comes time possibly use them and because um, as some of you know like neo scavengers uh, supernatural stuff is largely based on real world cryptids you know, people, things people have reported in, in the real world. Um, so that that definitely has a place in both Neo Scavenger and Astronauts because it's the same universe. Um, but as far as like actual writing writing goes, like, um, you know, we we don't really need more staff help at this time, if, if that's what you mean. Yeah, there's actually a really robust setting uh, built up by a previous writer that you can go read into if you want. Oh, actually, it's gone now, but anyway. Um, used to be on the BBG webpage, um, and it'll get back up there eventually or get somewhere. I hope so, yeah. I'd like to get it back up there. And honestly, it's so robust that, like... It's tip of the iceberg type stuff that you're seeing in the games right now. Like, there's a huge volume of information that we yeah, haven't surfaced there's like, yet. Yeah, there's, like, so much there that it's, like... we. It's almost, I mean, I don't want to say too much, but it's like we would be making an insanely large game if we hit everything that was just already written about, you know? So there's tons of lore there. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no like dearth of lore, that's for sure. Um, before I continue, uh, we are at the one and a half hour mark, Joshua. Um, so if folks want to start winding down, Probably they do because it's Friday night already where you guys are. Yeah, um, I have to wind down in the next ten minutes or so. But okay, so let's let's maybe be on our wind down path now. Um, I do see uh, another question in Discord. 
uh, Christophora is asking, any plans for connecting the events from Neoscavenger to Astronauts? Will plans going to be settled for Linked Universe only or maybe something more? Would love to see Indiana, not going to lie. Um, so same universe, same stuff happens in both universes. Same rules apply. Um, so whether the events of one game are going to leak through to the other, there are some corridors where that happens, like the space elevators um, in uh, the Neo Scavenger surface world are what allowed astronauts to happen. Um, some of the the sort of rumors that happen in one world do pass through to the other. Possibly some of the the events or characters as well. So I do think there's going to be cross seeding generally. Um, and then Neo Scavenger Two, I'm pretty sure is going to start in Indiana too. So <laughs> maybe that'll make you happy because uh, that's what's south of the Great Black Swamp in Michigan. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, I think of it as both games just being cut from the same cloth and they, sh they do share the fabric. Yeah, I mean, and we do have tons of actual thinking and talking about, about that question. That's sort of institutional knowledge for the studio um, that we won't disclose. But, but yeah, it's a very, very connected world for sure. Is there one last thing you wanted to show off, Joshua, maybe to, to wrap up? Oh man, what is happening? All of a sudden, lots of money is, is randomly being cheated into my character. How did this happen? <laughs> How did it enough, happen? Enough to afford the coolest ship in the universe. I don't know, 68,000 isn't going to buy you. Oh, okay, it's going up. It's going, it's going up. up. <laughs> if you want it to go up super fast, you can add stat USD to yourself and then hit shift one to sort of refresh the funds. Uh, what uh, I want to Lee Bai. I want to Lee Bai Gen 2. Oh, by the way, we got to beef up the Lee Bai. It's not that luxury anymore. Oh, yeah. It has those dinky little ba sleeping bags. We need it, to have uh, Yeah, there you go. Right, so Labor let's bar. sell the pizza time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. uh, you're gone. Let's see. Which one do we want? Any of these? Hold on, let me take a closer look. That freighter is the bulk for Oh yeah, that's a pretty good ship. I know that ship. It's a passenger shot. The Karen the Karen's good ship. I like the Karen. Hey, that passenger server has got the uh, the new bed. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one to do then. Uh it's basically the same as your starting ship though. Not that passenger server, the other one. Oh, this this the dream. It's just the dream, but it has a bed in it. One. Wait, um, <laughs> this one, this one. There it is. Yeah, this one's got the little, uh, the sort of pink bedroomy stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's a tone below on here, though, a, a reactor tone below. I want to quickly see if I can open this one up and show the show the bed because that is a nice new item. Um, and then as long as you don't have orange clashing with it, or so I hear. <laughs> That's a new bed. That's some new pink. Bedroomy stuff. There's a toilet and a sink right there in the bedroom for extra fun. Um, it's like a slightly more long range passenger so that we can just kind of sleep. Like kind of a uh, an RV or exactly. sleeper cab. Oh, this freighter looks cool. I might yeah, that's the Tone Below. It's a great ship. Very popular. So, you'll now see in my funds, I think, there's basically not a mortgage, right? Um, it's all been paid yeah, for. You'll... You can prepay your old mortgage away. Oh, there's descriptions now under all these ships that Naiba and I collaborated on, so that was also fun to do, this patch. Oh, stop there. Uh, use the ferry to go to your ship. Oh, yeah. Right, home. Pass. And is it at the bottom of the list? It's. Um, I'm trying to scroll, but it's not. Oh. Uh, no, because you're like already on the station. Yeah, it's connected I I, already. I thought I tried that before and it actually worked. Hmm. I wonder just... if it might actually not work with a ship you've just bought. I'd have to try that again and see. Let's go tone below. 
I love a tumbler. It's uh, really good for just a one uh, one character ship. Totally, I think it's one of the better solo ships to have. I mean, it has all this cargo space on the side. It's reactor powered. It's got a scrubber. Yeah. Four batteries. Where does the old ship go when you sell it? Um, I think when you sell your old ship, can you buy it back again, or do we just hide it forever? Uh, I mean, no, you can buy it back, and um, the station is then the owner. It has it in its uh, secret uh, storage area. Yeah. You'll never find that storage area. <laughs> Try. Uh, within the story, elements are static NPCs planned, or are they all procedural? Um, well, there's already static NPCs, kind of, in terms of like the fixer uh, or the port authority clerk, but they're not. They're almost like archetypes, kind of. So it'll be that kind of thing. I don't think they'll be named characters, if that's what you're asking. Except, like in a few narrow cases, like uh, the harbor master, um, maybe a few others, but. Mostly it'll be like archetypes with names implanted. Um, a wild editor Pierce asks, uh, whether, if you buy a second one, basically where that goes. So basically if you have already a ship docked at Kalec, then the other one gets parked outside of the station. Um, so you can either like take the docked ship and fly there, or you can use the ferry and get um, like ship there to the ship itself. Go start your reactor. Oh yeah, true. That's a interesting visual thing to do. It's going. It's already running for you. Oh, yeah, they, nice. they kept it hot. <laughs> wow, so it just spawns running? That's awesome. I mean, in a way that's kind of wasteful, but uh It's also kind of dangerous and I don't think we should allow that when we finally get around to it. <laughs> and it's also kind of dangerous opening up the cycle of your nuclear reactor while docked to OKLG, but Let's Yeah, there's go. nothing nothing unsafe about that. <laughs> Who am I to say? I mean, you could turn it off and restart it if you really want, as the last thing you do. The last thing you do. <laughs> oh, we know that. We could do that, too. But I kind of want people to find that on their own. Uh, any final questions before we head? Last question, maybe? Yeah, last question, because I do. I have to go. Uh... Let's see. We, can we check do screen have. Chat. Are there going to be more variants or new types of ships in the future? Um, I've seen the same type of ship twice in a row that said the new ones that appear on the character creation are really cool. I think there's a pretty good chance more ships will be added over time. I don't think we have a big one, big batch planned just yet. But there's enough updates left that I wouldn't be surprised if we see a couple more ships. If not, at least because we're going to need ships that handle combat once we exactly. add combat to the game. And also um, ships for new locations. If we get to new locations that kind of, whose environments maybe demand different kinds of ships, I could see Naiba getting into that. Oh, yeah. yeah. New locations, new ships, new things you can do with them. So I think that's pretty likely. It's like um, one of the easier, it's not easy, but it's like, among all the things we have to do, it's like a pretty streamlined process in comparison to some others. The most straightforward, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we should we should probably wrap up here, because like I said, it's in Europe, it's already getting pretty late on a Friday night, and I'm sure folks want to get back with their families, friends, and whatnot. So, um, Can we see the ferry real quick? Because I think a lot of people have missed where the, the button is, so... Okay, yeah, I want to do the PDA version of the ferry, just because that'll be the best bailout version. Let's go to the flotilla. And let's do the flotilla. And wow. so the ferry was immediate here because you are on the station where it leaves from. But if you are anywhere in like a 4,000 kilometer radius of K-Leg, you can summon a ferry and it'll take more or less time to get to you and pick you up based on how far away you are. And then you pay by the distance it takes you. And then here you are at your destination. So if you ever get into trouble and you have enough time to wait for the ferry. <laughs> then Pacific yeah. Airlines Space Service is at your disposal. This is basically perfect for if you run out of fuel and you're just idling somewhere. and you're yeah, not Or if you've sold your last ship. 
you can technically carry stuff, right? So you could just go, you could ferry back to OKLG if you have a little money, put some into in your hands or in a bag, right? And then, yeah. I guess, and then go back. Yeah. Yeah. It'll bring whatever is in your inventory, including the drag slot. The nice thing and I is, think crew too. Oh, sorry. Um, go ahead. The nice thing is, like, you don't have to have the PDA open all the time. So you can close it and the ferry will kind of make itself known again when the time runs out when as of basically when it's arrived um yeah. so you just can continue playing and yeah, exploring i forgot it's they a have tool a for their it's there for your use i forgot they have a blue reactor on flotilla so rarely come out here <laughs> why would you what a know. filthy mess you'd get stabbed <laughs> all right well why don't we wrap it up here um Thanks again for for everybody joining us in, in both Twitch and Discord land. Um, thanks to all the team for sticking around for the for the stream on a Friday afternoon slash evening. Of course. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll keep our eyes out for for feedback on the current build and and future ones. So um, do keep letting us know what you think of the things we've got and uh, how you're playing with the game and what what would help you play with it uh, and enjoy it better. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Should we find someone to? Should we see if there's anyone playing astronauts? See if we can raid someone. Oh yeah, that's a good um, idea. Uh, many people are doing that right now. There are two live us and X Clarks. Right, should we raid X Clarks? Ooh, this is exciting. We've never done a raid before. We've never done a raid before. I'm I'm excited. In fact, I can one of you? Like Go to X Clarks's stream and just make sure they're not like profusely okay, racist then... or something. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know how quickly I'll figure that one out, but we'll do our best. Hold on. Well, I just don't want to uh, send the whole stream there and then you know immediately drop into something weird. Uh, Looks like somebody playing astronauts to me. Hell yeah! Right, okie dokie. Uh, pretty quiet over there. Uh, oh, hashtag lurkers welcome, lurker friendly. Anxiety and depression. Hopefully, we don't make them terrified. Right. right. Everybody, be, everybody be nice. Everybody be nice to this person. We're gonna go rate them. Thank you very much for watching the stream. We shall see you at some point in the future. Bye. 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 Bye.